May 20th, 2013 was starting out like a regular day. There had been reports that the weather conditions were going to be favorable for tornadoes. It was a little more apprehensive than normal. Oklahoma is the mecca of all severe weather markets in the entire world. Now it's on the ground. ground. That's on the ground. Got a tornado. Tornado on the ground. I had windows in my classroom and it got really black. We went to the hallway. The louder it got, the scarier they got. Now is the time to go into your tornado shelter. We didn't have a storm shelter, so our closet was the best place. The walls all just came on top of us. So I was just yelling out, we're going to be fine, we're going to be fine. I turned around and I saw the elementary school and I was just in shock. When a disaster happens, everybody in the city of Moore becomes a first responder. A tornado emergency has been issued. When they say tornado emergency, people are going to die. Moore is a very uh, modern city in the middle of the prairie. We have a population of about 66,000 people, and it is um, a lot of good, ordinary people, and everybody has a good spirit about them. It's a very friendly town. It's a very friendly community, and a lot of people that, that come there uh, decide this is, this is where I want to live. We moved to Oklahoma in 2003 when my company opened a plant out there. The people that we had talked to that knew the area were directing us to Moore. We moved out there with our son and our oldest daughter, Casey. Sydney was born in 2004. It was a pretty good mix in the neighborhood. There was quite a few different, different styles and age groups of people there. It, it was really what we were looking for. My favorite thing about Moore and probably why we moved there in the beginning was because they have really good school districts. My children went to Plaza Towers Elementary. The children loved Plaza Towers. They had grown up with those friends from kindergarten up, so they knew everybody. Xavier was in Miss Stone's class. He absolutely loved Miss Stone. I wanted to be a teacher to change the lives of kids. That's what it was all about. In 2013, I was teaching at Plaza Towers, third grade. And it was just my second year there. I was eight weeks pregnant towards the end of the year. Okay, quiet down, guys. When the hand goes up, the mouth gets quiet. Very good. Now I know you're I ready. was really blessed with my class in 2013. They were just a great group of kids overall. Plaza Towers was divided into two buildings. There was the main building. It housed kindergarten, first grade, fourth, fifth, and sixth. There was a separate building for second and third grade. Sydney had Mrs. Jennifer Dona as her teacher in that second building. She had nothing but good things to say about her. Xavier was a class clown. He was always making everybody laugh. He didn't have one specific friend. He was friends with everyone. He would play wall ball with Sydney Angle. Sydney would actually get in trouble sometimes for being a little bit too rough while playing, but yeah, she was she was a bit of a tomboy. Sydney was born a leader. All right, guys, me and Xavier start. You guys line up. She loved her wall ball. That's where you could find her at recess. Playing with the boys. The boys usually didn't want to play with her because she could outthrow them. <laughs> Sydney was kind of a free spirit when it came to school, so she would get in some trouble once in a while. I actually had less conversations with Miss Stone than I had with most of Sydney's other teachers. Plaza Towers was a great school to be at. The staff there was great. The kids there were great. I mean, it was just a good experience overall. May 
May 20th, 2013 was, was starting out like a regular day. At that time, my wife was working nights, so she wasn't home yet, and it was my job to go ahead and get the girls up and ready for school. wake up pretty early to go to work for my job so I would only see them a small small amount of time in the morning I would go in the room wake them up get them going and get them ready for school each morning there had been reports that the weather conditions were going to be favorable for tornadoes that day but that had been the case many previous days with no storms really causing any damage in our area, so I treated it like any other day. Tornado season can happen any time during the year, but it usually happens between the months of March and the end of May. On May 20th, I had to work at like 7.30 in the morning, so I got up and as I was leaving, I noticed that it was already bright and sunny outside and it was really sticky and humid. My two youngest were at home and my husband was just gonna take them to school that morning. I was a little more apprehensive than normal. We had a tornado by where I lived the night before and they were saying the same things about that day. I had told my husband that I didn't have a good feeling about that day. And he told me to call in at work, and I was like, you're so silly, I can't do that. It was the last week of school. I mean, I got in my car just like any other day and drove myself to work. Oklahoma is the mecca of all severe weather markets in the entire world. As a meteorologist, it does not get any more active than in Oklahoma City. I remember stepping outside and, and you could feel it. You could just, you could feel the humidity and it just felt different. It felt off that day. I had kissed my wife goodbye. You know, she was going to work, I was going to work. And I sent her a text message and said, I need you to go home early today. It wasn't a matter of our storm's going to develop, it's what time. Tornadoes are classified in a very simple way. We have an EF0, which is your weakest tornado. An EF3, you start to see the damage become a little bit more significant. You start to see roofs that are ripped off of houses. You start to see windows that are just punched out. You get up to EF4 and EF5 status, and now you're talking about a tornado that will leave the community unrecognizable to survivors. I have been the mayor of Moore, Oklahoma since 1994. I've experienced three F5 tornadoes since I've been the mayor. And uh, the first one in, in 1999 is still the holding record, 319 mile winds, which is the strongest tornado ever recorded on the face of the earth. It literally sucked the grass and the trees off the golf course. Homes were reduced to rubble. You could not recognize communities. And that was Moore's first true taste of a, a big time tornado. We thought, well, you can't have a, a bad tornado again. You know, I mean, the odds of Moore getting hit twice in, you know, less than 15 years can't happen again. Surely it can't happen again. On May 20th of 2013, I lived in Moore, Oklahoma. My house was four houses down the street from Plaza Towers. There was a small field, which was the elementary school's playground, the field I grew up playing soccer and football on when I attended the school. And then just on the other side of that field were three houses, and then you hit my house. We'll be seeing some damaging winds of about 60 miles per hour that is going to be within the rusty. Heavy, uh, large People's reaction to severe weather varies. When I was younger, it used to scare me. I would always 
put on my bicycle helmet and grab a bunch of blankets and get under a mattress in the hallway or the bathroom, which is what they always tell you to do. But as I got older, I just got so accustomed to it. I would always stand outside and watch. Never really thought, oh, it's gonna hit my house. And that's exactly what I did on May 20th in 2013. It was as soon as I saw it on the weather channel, I was going outside and looking to see what I could see from my driveway. The year started for me in January. I had gone back after my husband had been fighting cancer. It was like an outlet that I could go to school and not worry about anybody being sick. In May of 2013, I taught sixth grade math. My classroom was in the main building, and Jennifer's classroom was in the second and third grade building that also housed the computer lab. And we were just doing routine stuff, some writing and reflecting on how the year went for them. We were all excited, of course. It was, I mean, there was a week of school left, so they're all ready for the summer. I walk them to lunch, and they go on from lunch to recess. I was putting together little memory books where they can sign an autograph later in the afternoon. The weather was sunny. It was kind of muggy. It was a normal day at the end of the school year. I actually went to lunch with one of my friends that day, and they said, did you know that Newcastle let out school because of a tornado? And I said, no, I didn't know that. And she's like, yeah, like we, we don't let out school for a tornado. I'm like, why would you let out school for a tornado? We'd be out of school every day. Joke, 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 you know? She's like, well, they, they say bad weather's coming in. You might head back home as soon as school's out. And I'm like, yeah, I know, you too. Both of us went back to school, no big deal. At 12 o'clock, we started doing cut-ins. This is a KOCO5 First Alert Tornado Watch. All right, from the First Alert Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Damon Lane. We do have a, a developing weather situation ongoing now. We now have a severe thunderstorm warning. It does include... We watched one storm that went up. Had a little bit of difficulty. It kind of went up, and we thought this was going to be it. Um, and then it fizzled out. And then the second storm went up near Newcastle. This is going to be just west of the Canadian River there. You can see our, we're detecting circulation right along North Council Road, right along County Line Road. Now, and it kept getting stronger. Past, and it kept getting stronger. This is an and suddenly, our radar started pinging out these little spinning rings on the on the extreme southern side of this here here is the next yeah, one this this, one right this is the area of concern i really have this is all all out by itself it's got good inflow yeah. we're seeing it most tornadoes usually will move about 35 40 miles per hour this tornado was moving half that speed 15 20 miles per hour and just about every tornadic thunderstorm moves from the southwest to the northeast. This is a tornado warning, putting a timeline on here, Newcastle 244. More, this tornadic thunderstorm will be in Moore at 307. Moore is a bedroom community. A lot of people sleep there, but not a lot of people work there. But not everyone can get to the schools that fast to get their children. We provided as much warning as we could that day. But, you know, it's even the slow moving storms can sometimes be the worst. Probably around two o'clock, the weather started deteriorating. Yep. Yeah, I just saw that. Right. And we were moved into our shelter to wait for it to pass. Then there were also reports of Plaza Towers letting the kids get out early. And I texted Nicole, wondering if she was going to go get the kids. We still believe that the school was going to be the safer place for them, even if a tornado did come through the area. Um, big, huge, brick-reinforced building opposed to our little 
um, balsa wood house. It, 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 it seemed like a no-brainer. My 14-year-old had a doctor's appointment. We hopped in our car, and as we were pulling out of the parking lot at Moore Medical Center, the sirens started going off. I never dreamed that Plaza Towers would get hit. Oh, must be close. What do you think? Should we get Xavier and Haley out? I mean, it doesn't look that bad. It's up to you. We're headed in that direction. I was like, you know, I think I'm just gonna leave them there. I think they'll be safer. We didn't know the severity of anything. And so we drove right pl past Plaza Towers. I brought back some lunch and sat at my desk and did some work, picked them up from music and came back. And they started to color the covers of their books. There were thunderstorms that started, which is also still a pretty normal thing in May, a thunderstorm to come through. I had windows in my classroom, and it got really black. Okay. Then one of the little girl's phones okay. rings. Everybody's phones start going off with weather alerts. Teachers, a tornado warning has been issued. I would like everybody to get their backpacks ready and go to the hall as a precaution. Parents are authorized to pick up their children from the hall. Okay, you know the drill. Pick up your backpacks, line up at the door, leave your stuff. That's right, come on. Come on, let's go. Our principal came over the intercom, and it had taken me by surprise. But she had come over the intercom to tell us to go ahead and take our precautions. Okay, let's line up. Make sure you're in order. Which meant getting all the kids calmed down and out into the hallway. Most Oklahoma schools do not have tornado shelters. Until the May 20th tornado, more had never been hit during school hours. So it wasn't something that people thought to have. It was around 22 kids in the class. Okay, let's line up, make sure you're in order. As quickly as we could, we got in line. Then went out into the hallway. Xavier Porter, please hurry. I stayed behind with the stragglers. But Xavier was great. He was just one of those students that always needed me to keep him in line. Come on, buddy, you can finish that later, okay? Porter was another kid that I was always by. Are you ready? Let's go. Stay with me, okay? They were straggling in the room, finishing or doing whatever it was they were doing still. I was outside with all of my neighbors. How's it looking? And we were kind of yelling back and forth from driveway to driveway. Sure enough, you could see the dark clouds and you could see debris kind of flying out the side of it. And we were just like, this might get us. River there. there was a storm chaser on the road and he was screaming on the radio. Damn it, people in Westmore need to be underground on this tornado. We have debris, large, large chunks of debris. And I was just kind of in shock for a second. And then it hit me like, okay, this may really be happening. This tornado may actually hit my house. We were in the shelter at work. And at that point, cell service got real spotty. Couldn't really get a lot of communications in or out. It was kind of hard to track what was going on and, and where it was heading if it was even still on the ground. Nicole, I know her plan was still to go get the kids. She was gonna wake up, take a shower, and get ready, go grab them, and bring them home. Tornado, there you go, you see it? There you see it. Yeah, now it's, on, it's the on the ground. That's on the ground. Got a tornado. tornado. We're watching this tornado, the supercell, develop. Within a minute, it went from this thin rope. We're still just a few miles, what it looks like, just north of Newcastle. To this 
large wedge tornado that to this day, I have never seen anything go from as small as it was to this huge tornado. 2.45 that afternoon, everything just broke loose. Winds that could be in excess of 150 miles now, or perhaps even higher than that. Oh, those are cars! Oh my gosh, those are cars! This is going F5 right now. It just crossed the river. Uh, I think I've seen two cars get picked up off the bridge and thrown in the air. And at 3 o'clock, when the National Weather Service sends out tornado emergency. Tornado emergency is now coming. We do have a tornado emergency for this storm that is moving into more right now. You need to be below ground immediately. Now is the time to go into your tornado shelter. When they say tornado emergency, people are gonna die. schools always have tornado precautions. You get in the hall, you get down on your knees, you cover your head, and you wait, and then the tornado precaution is over. Before 2013, with the drills, it, it was just a drill. Some of them would take it seriously, and some of them not so much. After 2013, though, that all changed. That all changed. storming and you could hear the hail coming down and the louder it got the scarier they got sit do that position hands over head come on good job good one job. of the teachers said i don't think that we should be just in the hall i think that we need to move the kids to the bathrooms. Mr. Ayers, who was standing outside watching, um, he came down the hall. Everyone in the bathroom. All right, you heard. Come on. Let's go. OK. Come on, let's go. Let's go. It's OK. Let's go. Come on in. Come on. It was blowing and raining really hard, and it was hailing. So it was loud in the bathroom. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be just fine, okay? Everybody just get down. Come on. So I was just yelling out, we're gonna be fine, we're gonna be fine. This won't last very long. Come on, everybody down. Go, good, 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 good. It's okay. The tornado looked like a, a gray funnel. It was very narrow at the bottom and extremely wide at the top. Just absolutely huge. You could just see it plain as day at the end of our street. Debris flying everywhere. The wind was just roaring. The sirens actually had stopped and they spoke. This is not a warning. Please take shelter now. I crawled down into the cellar and shut the door. And there were so many people, I couldn't go all the way down and have a seat on one of the benches that they had in there. So I sat on the top step and had my back up against the cellar door, and the storm hit. A 
a tornado emergency is now in effect for Cleveland, McLean, and Oklahoma County. This is the most significant of all warnings that we can issue when it comes to a tornado, okay? Let me say this, and I'm going to say this with as, as serious as I've ever said in the seven years I've been here. If you are not underground on the path of this storm, you are endangering your life. You have to okay. be out of the path of this tornado. We didn't have a storm shelter, so our closet was the best place, and so we just grabbed pillows and blankets, and my son put his football helmet on. Adrian, come on. Come on, my Come on. Get in. It's okay. Let's go right past us, okay? When I got in the closet, I left the light on so that I would know when we would lose power, because you just want to know those things. Okay, good deal. My husband's upstairs in my daughter's room taking pictures out the window. Hey, good to say, it's just a storm. Good. It's headed right for us. Everyone get down. Just hold on to me. Hold on. Just stay down. Our principal came over the intercom and said, I mean, it's it's here. <laughs> right between Xavier and Porter. I reached over Porter to Nicholas to rub his back and tell him it was gonna be okay. And for a moment in there, it got quiet. I mean, it didn't sound like there was a storm coming or a storm was there even. Just for that second. This is a large, violent tornado. A tornado emergency has been issued. This one has gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. That really concerns me about how long this thing is going to be on the ground. I would go ahead and get underground right now. Violent tornado, and this thing is picking up the tree. Here you go. You're down. Come on. Let's go. Let your practice. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We're just going to hold on. The kids that were in the bathroom with me, they were holding on to me. The little boy, he looked at me as it started, and he said to me, Ms. Crosswhite, I don't want to die. I don't want to die today. And I said, we're not going to die today. I have things to do. All of a sudden, it sounded like there were people surrounding that storm door, and they all had sledgehammers and just started wailing down on it. The tornado actually tried pulling the door open. I just grabbed the handle over my shoulder right here and just bared all my weight down on it to try and keep it closed. The windows were breaking, and it just felt like the house around us was coming apart. I was holding my head like this because it hurt so bad. I remember holding the door and I just closed my eyes and prayed. Please keep this door shut, keep us safe, keep everybody that wasn't able to make it to a shelter safe. I was praying for the sound to go away and the pressure and the pain to go away. I was praying. We're talking about more city limits, streets between Southwest 19th and 4th Street in the Oklahoma City area. I remember it getting incredibly quiet in the studio, which in Oklahoma City, when there's an EF5 tornado going through, a very densely populated part of, of town, it never gets quiet. We continue our coverage right here. I'm depicting a lot of debris being wrapped up within this tornado. And again, uh, it looks like this tornado continues to be uh, right over 149th Street. This is Southwest 149th Street. And I started seeing these pictures that I just remember thinking, 
Oh my gosh. This is bad. Uh, this is really bad. And I remember trying to call my wife, trying to call my wife. All circuits are busy. And our general manager was there. And he was making calls to say, we need help. And I remember I fell to my knees. And I don't remember exactly what I prayed. But I prayed hard. I don't even know how long, but everything just came crashing down. And I could feel more and more just hit me. The walls all just came in and on top of us. And the crying stopped. We were buried in our spot, down in a position where we couldn't move at all. Be right back. After the tornado passed, we came outside. My husband and my son run to one of the houses where the lady was screaming that she needed help getting her grandchild out. I was like, we have to go. We have to get our kids. We have to get our, you know, our oldest and our youngest from the school. And at this time, we still didn't know. I gotten a few texts to go through with my wife. The last text I got from her before I left work was that she was scared and that the house was shaking. She was trapped in the house and that um, it, it sounded like a freight train was coming through and the windows were breaking. They cleared our alarm at work and we were able to leave the shelter and I immediately got in my, my truck and headed home. Once the beating on the door had stopped, I decided I was going to open the door. And so I opened it and I cracked it just a little bit. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No, no, no. Close it. And I saw my neighborhood basically wiped out. It was unrecognizable. The way I was feeling, I just shut it down. No more emotions. I didn't care about my personal belongings at that point in time. It was lives that mattered the most, and it was help people who can't help themselves right now in this situation. One of the boys in the bathroom, I said, okay, you're gonna have to climb to the top of the cinder blocks and you're gonna have to tell us how we're gonna get out of here. Okay, don't be afraid. Do this, let's go. Up. Okay, come on. And I said, but when you get up there, there's nothing left. So don't be scared. up and he looked back down at us and he goes there's nothing left We're like yeah we know we just told you that he goes no there's nothing left the school building's like flat <laughs> it's okay come on go on guys 
Go on, we're okay. She'll help you. There you go. Go on. It's okay. All right. Go on, follow them. The bathrooms were follow. completely intact. Walls still standing. The stalls, all of them still where they're supposed to be. But yet the classroom's right outside. Nothing. My classroom, the carpet had been sucked off the foundation. There was nothing left in my classroom except for one broken calculator. My friend's classroom, the stuff on her desk was still sitting exactly in the same spot that she had left it. Like a pen hadn't even been moved. A picture frame wasn't even broken. You can't even describe and do justice to what you look at when you see it. Cause you're just like, looking at it like, I can't believe that this destruction just happened and, and we're walking out of it. We're running to Plaza, I'm like screaming at other people, asking them, you know, if they know anything about the kids at Plaza and everybody's just ignoring me or maybe they're in shock too, I don't know. And I didn't hear anything they were saying to me either because I, my brain was focused on getting to the kids' school. There was no houses left, so you were able just to walk through the field that blocked the houses from Plaza. Like, we just walked literally through people's lives to get to Plaza. The front part of Plaza still kind of looked like Plaza. Like, there were still some walls up. The back part of Plaza, where my kids were at, I didn't even know where that building was because it wasn't there anymore. So we got out. One of my neighbors was outside and said, there's people stuck in all these houses. We need to go help them. And we just took off at that point. I remember I opened Storm Cellar, and another person had walked up and helped me with it. And he was like, yeah, I just came from the school. And I turned around, and I saw the elementary school. Had it not been for the mangled playground equipment that was out back of it, I would not have known what that building was. It was at that point in time that just this calm feeling had come over me, and nobody will understand the feeling of what I felt unless it happens to you. Almost as if it felt like God was talking through my body to me. And I just started running towards the school. was crushing. I mean, the whole weight of the building was on my back. And it was dark. Couldn't breathe. I had reached over for Nicholas, so Porter was on my side. Stuff had fallen in between me and Xavier. We were buried in our spot. There was a lot of things going through my head. I was eight weeks pregnant. A lot of flashes of people and my kids that were there with me. my own kids at home, whether or not I was going to see them. You know, a lot of things go through your head when you think you're going to die. Nicole! <sighs> you couldn't really see the school at all from our house, but both sides of, of our street were were gone. I, I didn't really have a problem with the house itself. I mean, 
Sure, there's a lot of things that we we're gonna have to replace, but as long as everyone was safe, uh, we came out of it okay, I thought. Um, and that was the most important part. After I realized that Nicole was okay, um, one of us needed to stick around at, at the house with the, with the dogs and try to go through it and see if there was anything that could be salvaged, and, and she decided to run to the school to get the girls. I still, to this day, figured the school's the safest building for them to be at. I knew there was a chance that my kid didn't make it. How can a little body sustain all those bricks and stuff on them? Can somebody help me find my kids? I'm looking for my kids. I'm looking for my kids. What grade? Second and third. Second grade is up there. And that's third grade. I just started bawling because I was so scared for my son. I didn't know what, you know, if he was dead or if he was alive. <laughs> I found Haley. She's waiting in front. What's wrong? <laughs> they tell you where Xavier is. Oh. <laughs> Coming up, there's little kids trapped under this wall. When a disaster happens, everybody in the city of Moore becomes a first responder. It was not an ordinary storm. It was called a grinder tornado, and it stayed on the ground for so long that it just churned and churned and churned. It's not like it's moving 60 miles an hour. This is moving 20 miles an hour at best, and everything in its path is leveled. Do you know that there are people who are dead and you know that there's a lot of people that are hurt. When a disaster happens, everybody in the city of Moore becomes a first responder. You can see barely what's left of this elementary school. I'm hearing that perhaps 40 students may be unaccounted for, and that is something that nobody wants to hear. Um, so it's a very dire situation here. As soon as I got to the school, I see two off-duty firefighters, and one of them is standing in a pile of debris, handing up a child to the other one. And it, it hit me, oh my gosh, there's little kids trapped under this wall. And there were some broken up bricks from that wall that had collapsed. And so I just kind of moved them out of the way and created a small hole. All right, hey, hey. And as soon as I put my head down in there, there was a little face just staring at me, and it immediately just hit me, get in there. Are they, are your legs straight? There. Yeah. Oh, no. Talk to right there. All right, I'm, um, uh... Hey, can you, uh... Let's see if you can push that out of the way. Can you, uh, can you pull toward me at all, or... Okay, okay, sweetie. Come on, come on, you got it. Just wait. Just okay. I talked to her moved everything that I could out of her way. Yeah. All right, move toward me a little bit. All right, you got it. Okay. Okay, come on. You got it, sweetie. Come on, move toward me. All right. <laughs> All right, there we go. Come on. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. People are starting at this point to run to the school building, random people. So there's a, a man coming up and I say, is there anything left down there? And he said, the church is standing still down there. So one of the teachers said, okay, we're gonna walk everybody, all the kids that are left in our bathroom, we're gonna go down to the church. 
though, I went to the back of the building and they were pulling people out of the second and third grade building at this time. They were doing kind of a chain, like, you hand me this one, I'll hand it all the way down because there was just rubble everywhere. Well, I just stood where I was supposed to be and started helping. Does anybody have a flashlight? I could hear another little girl. I couldn't see her at this point. And I, I just started moving everything out of the way so I could get to her. And I was pulling out just little kids' jackets, raincoats. Remember there was a backpack that had basketballs and footballs on it. And when I picked it up to move it out of the way, the big round Crayola washable markers dumped out on my knees in front of me. That really hit me hard knowing how young those kids were, because I can't remember the last time I used markers like that. I was very little. I was like, they can't help themselves in this situation, so somebody needs to. Wait, my back hurts really bad. Yes, hey, hey. Oh, okay. Hey, look at me. The second girl, I finally got to her. Yeah. You're gonna be all right, baby, okay? All right, you, uh, you got a wall on you. All right, one second. Hey! There's another one. There's another one in there. She's uh, trapped under some rebar. Hey. We're gonna get you out of here, okay? Okay, okay? All right. Dear Lord, please, Lord, help, help this girl in her hour of need, oh God. Deliver her, God. I really thought that the girls would be the safest. The school was a large building, um, brick, cinder blocks. I mean, there was a lot lot there that led me to believe that if there was a safe building really in our neighborhood that the school would be it. When Nicole got to the school, Casey saw her walk up relatively soon and went running to her and, and she was fine. Then Nicole had to search out some teachers to find out where the third grades, third graders were and one of them told her that she, that she believes they were taken to a nearby church. She decided to come back home, find a way to get my truck so she could get to that church to pick up Sydney. At this point, we were very certain that Sydney was okay. I was conserving breasts down there. Porter was trying to push his way out a lot. I need you to calm down. I had to tell him as best I could to stay calm. I mean, I had a baby inside me, and I had Porter right there. And he, he kept yelling things like he didn't want to die, and Porter. please don't let him die. It's going. Don't let me die. Oh, Porter, please stop moving. Please. We heard people somewhere. <laughs> Tried to scream out for help. Here. Oh, here. We're down here. Please. Oh, stop. Porter, sweetie. Please stop moving. Stop moving. Stop moving. But I was so scared. It was crushing. I mean, the whole weight of the building was on my back. But I was scared that someone wouldn't know where we were and tried to help us and just stepped right on us. And that would have been it. And I heard a teacher say that there is a teacher down there still and she's pregnant. I didn't think I was then anymore. It blew me away to see the damage that had been done to that building. I attended that school 
I had seen it my whole life. All right, one second. I came out of the tunnel, and I said, there's one trap. And I told them about the rebar across her back, and they got these power jacks, and they just pushed that rebar up enough to where we could slide her out. And she crawled out to us, and they picked her up, and they handed her to me. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Her back's hurt. What do we do? Her back was already turning purple. They, they touched her feet, and they said, can you feel this? Can you feel us touching your feet? She said, no. And I just remember them yelling, this one needs to go now. My husband comes running back to me, and he said, I found Haley. She's OK. And I said, well, did they tell you where Xavier is? And uh, he said, no. And I pointed to the rubble, and I said, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> We were trapped for about an hour. I mean, honestly, I don't, there's no concept of time down there. We heard the voices. They said they were there. And somehow they dug a little hole. Finally, there was a little bit of air to breathe. I heard them get to Xavier. and said everything else went quiet except for that. It's over here, honey. Mommy, Xavier, mommy. are you hurt? Are you OK? I dragged it out. I covered it. It's OK. No one could hear me. It's OK, you're safe. I'm going to okay. go get a stretcher. OK. Can I hug him? You're OK. You're OK. I'm right here. I'm right here. Okay. Yeah, he's here. Right. He was next to Miss Doan. She put her arms around Xavier and the other little boy, Porter, that was next to her. She got in between them, too, and had her arms like this around them. He said he was never scared the whole time. He was never scared. The office called and said that everybody needs to take shelter now. And then it just started. All I heard was banging on the ceiling. And then a few seconds later, I was just in a dark little dome. When I got out, I was wondering why they had to pass me around. I didn't know anything happened to my back until afterwards, because I was in shock and I couldn't feel anything. He was impelled by something in the hallway, but when, the, when they went to pull him out, they had to remove the piece in order to get him out. I knew we could deal with whatever was wrong with him. I was so happy to have him. I heard Xavier tell him his name, so I knew Xavier was okay. I'm here. We're down here. And they came down further to where we were. Here, prop this up. Hey, you okay? You all right? Reach up for me. They got Porter me. out of that hole. Good, good, good. Give me, get, get your other one. Turn your body. Good, good, good. Now pull, pull. You're almost there. Come on. You're doing good. You're doing good. Keep pulling. Good. good I job. remember a hand that reached down to grab a hold of my hand. Right. And he told me he was there and that he wouldn't let go. Gotcha. I went to the back of the building and they were pulling people out of the second and third grade building. And then they pulled Jennifer out. I did see some of my parents that were there then, waiting to lay eyes on their kid. Are you okay? I'm pregnant. 
I think I lost the baby. Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. It's okay. You're barely showing you did not lose that baby. You're not that far along. And lose the baby. We weren't there very long with her, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then a whole bunch of men picked her up and put her on the Jeep. A stranger got behind me and laid my head in his lap just so I wouldn't be laying in a hard truck bed. I remember looking up at the sky. It was beautiful. I mean, it didn't look like anything that had transpired there an hour before. They took me to OU Medical Center. My spine was fractured in three places. My sternum was also fractured. And they had an ultrasound on my belly. All the doctors, they were everywhere, and I was just looking up at these bright lights that they had shining on me. And one doctor after another spouting off things like I hear on Grey's Anatomy. I asked the hospital chaplain to call my husband. I think when I first saw him, I was just overcome with so much emotion. All I could do was cry. Nicole, she had heard that the third grade girls were taken to a local church. Nicole left and got to the church to pick Sydney up around 5.30. A number of hours passed, and she was waiting at this church, waiting and waiting and waiting. Finally, a friend of ours who is a, a city police officer showed up at the house where I was, um, grabbed me and the dogs, and took us in his car to meet with her. someone? Yeah, um, Cindy Angle. She's in third grade. We were told she was going to come here um, after the other church. We, um... Our son was actually brought to this church from the high school, so we had gotten him. He was okay. But then they said that the, the third grade class from Plaza Towers was going to be taken to a different church. There was no power in that neighborhood. Everything was dark. They brought us inside the church that was lit really only by candles. confusion tonight. Um, it would help us a lot if you could give us a detailed description of Sydney. Oh, uh, oh of course. I've got pictures. I've got pictures. Um, yeah, there she, there she is. She's just lying in. Um, she's got uh, blue eyes and brown hair. And she was, um, oh, what was she wearing? Do you know what she was wearing, Dan? Dan, what was she wearing today? I, uh, I don't, I, I don't remember. Okay, um, okay, well, her favorite shirt. Um, the police school. gathered all the families together that were still looking for their children. They asked us for, um, some identifying information for the kids. My wife 
still had hope at that point, but I was pretty certain I knew what they were saying. I knew at that point that it was bad. Officer Mitchell. Yeah, this is a Dan Engel. I'm calling about my daughter, Sydney. You gave me your card last night. Yes. Uh, hello, Mr. Engel. Yeah, well, I've just been waiting to hear something from you guys. Uh, can you tell me anything? Is there anything new? Is there something we should be doing? Should we be going somewhere? Yes, I I've been trying to get a hold of you. Did you find Sydney? We need you to come back down to the West Union Baptist Church. We were there last night. Uh, is, uh, what's, what's going on? Uh, did you find her? Is she safe? I think it's best if you come down. If there is any new information, they'll, they'll have it here. Okay, uh, we will we'll come down. Hi, um, by the angles, I'm Dan. This is my wife Nicole. We were told to come here. Nicole and I went back to this this church and as soon as we walked in they ushered us back to a pretty private room and as soon as, as soon as I saw that I, I knew the news we were gonna get. Um, and they let us know that that they found Sydney in in school and that she was gone. Casey, her sister, was in a bathroom in the older building. Sydney was part of a, a group of people that were in a hallway in that in the newer building, and part of the wall had collapsed and collapsed onto a group of kids, and she was in that that group. We expected to see our little girl grow up and graduate high school and get a degree and be a softball player and have a career and a family of her own one day. And any other version of our future is just not acceptable. Sydney would often fight bedtime. About 11 o'clock the night before, Sydney came out of her room. Hey, what are you doing up? You were supposed to be asleep hours ago. I just wanted to give you some hugs. <sighs> Good night, sweetie. Good night. I love you. She just wanted to come out and give us another kiss and a hug. And uh, that's really, that's really the last conversation I got to have with her. She was perfect. I mean, she was, she was what I, I mean, I've said it before, she's exactly what this world needed more of. I didn't realize how injured Jennifer was 
It was like we were all in a state of shock. I knew she couldn't walk, but I didn't realize at the time the extent of her injuries. She said to me, I'm afraid I've lost my baby. And I said, you're, you didn't lose your baby. You're not that far along, because I didn't even know she was pregnant until she told me then. I hadn't told a lot of people at that time. I was at the hospital, and I remember hearing that there was a heartbeat. I mean, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and there was that moment of relief. But everything else was haunting me still. <laughs> to my class. I don't know. Please, please, please just tell me. I need to know. I need to know. I don't know. I kept asking and asking. But no one would tell me anything. No one would tell me anything. I didn't know that our students didn't make it because somebody came out and told us. I knew that our students didn't make it because she said to me, after I leave, will you come tell me when they get my kids out? So she knew that something wasn't right. which made me know that something wasn't right. I guess somewhere in there, somebody decided I was ready to hear it. The psychiatrist who had been talking to me all this time while I was at the hospital, I saw him at the door. He had this piece of paper in his hand. And I knew what he was there for. My husband was holding on to my hand. I didn't know how many names there were on there. But when he read them, <laughs> name after name after name, They were all mine. Sydney Angle, Antonia Candelaria, Emily Knatzer, Janae Hornsby, Kyle Davis, Nicholas McCabe. There were six kids in my class that didn't make it, as well as one more from another third grade class. He had lost his original spot, so when he came back from the bathroom, he was down with my class. It was Christopher Legg. When he was reading off the list of names to me, I'm not sure there was a single person in the building who couldn't hear me. It just got louder and louder. The more names I heard. In the wake of
of the tornado that leveled a significant amount of more, nothing is more tragic than the loss of a number of students from Plaza Towers Elementary. Today, I remember the news coming on, and it was listing all the all seven kids that died. Nicholas McCabe, Antonia Candelaria, Kyle Davis. Xavier's standing there, and I'm kind of watching him, and he's going like this on his fingers. And I didn't know why, but he was touching his fingers, and he said, Mom, all those kids were in my class except for one. And uh, that's when we knew. I felt horrible when he found out that way. By the time the storm hit, I had 11 kids left there with me. and only five were able to walk out. As a teacher, they were your kids, and at the end of the day, you hand them back to their parents. All really excited for this week. And I couldn't do that. I'm gonna give you a I walked out with my kid and I couldn't hand them back with theirs. This is the gymnasium and this first, second, third grades. And I think possibly the kindergarten was back in this area too. At that storm, there was 10 children killed under 18 years old. We had a total of 24 killed that day. After the tornado, it was a really busy time. It was also a very sad time for the city of Moore. And we, you know, you just have to grieve. And I know that these families, they're still grieving. And that's probably what hurts the worst. When I was underneath the wall in the little tunnel that I had found, I had gotten the first girl out. And through the debris, I just saw like a little, like a hand. And I grabbed it, like, hey, I'm right here. I'm gonna get you out. And there was no response. And I stood up, and there was a firefighter standing up on top of the wall. And I told him, we've got kids under here that didn't make it. And he told me, well, then you need to not worry about them right now. Go back under there and get the ones that you can save. It was heartbreaking. What shook me up the most about the whole thing was knowing that I was able to save kids, but knowing at the same time there were others that had I done everything right, I still wouldn't have been able to help. When I was underneath the school, my phone somehow started recording in my pocket. And I came across one video, and it was pitch black. I couldn't see anything. I got you, sweetie, OK? How far are your legs back? Are your legs straight? Oh, no, you're tucked right here. Oh, my back hurts really bad. Oh, yes. Hey, sweetie, I'm coming, OK? One of the things that really got me was when I pulled the first little girl out and handed her off to a firefighter. You could just hear her say, thank you so much. Come on. And Come on. I didn't hear that. Thank you so much. Come on, sweetie. Come on. This was probably a seven-year-old girl, and you can just hear the most sincere thank you you've ever heard from somebody that young. That's why I decided to go to school, get my EMT, and began working in Oklahoma City. It changed my life. I would not be where I am today had that day not happened.
had it not been for that day, I would have no idea. The perfect ingredients for a tornado, you need that warm, humid gulf air that comes in during the springtime. You need that instability and you need those winds all moving in the right direction. And it happens right over Oklahoma during the springtime. The tornado that hit more that day had the perfect ingredients to become the deadliest tornado that year. This tornado, as much as it tried to rip the city apart, it brought so many people together. Tornado happened in May, and they had a makeshift school the following school year. And then it took that entire school year to rebuild Plaza. It has been rebuilt, re-engineered, and now it's ready. This is a new school building, just in time for the start of a new chapter and a new school year. Being a survivor to me is knowing that God still had a plan for me on Earth that I needed to take care of. Not sure what that plan is, but it wasn't my time to go yet. Jennifer had her baby, Jack, the December after the tornado. He's at least um, a light for her that there are good things still happening. It was hard to get back into a classroom after everything. But today, I'm back at it. It makes me feel like I still have a purpose doing what I was meant to do. Softball is a big part of our life. It has been for quite some time. As soon as Sydney was old enough to start throwing a ball, we got her involved. The softball community has, has really become our family away from home for us since we've been in Oklahoma. Sydney's coach set up a, a benefit tournament for us, and we realized that this community is, is capable of so many good things that we wanted to find a way to not only tap into that and give something back to the community, but to do so in Sydney's name, something that she could still be a part of. This year, we were able to put together six scholarships for local high school softball players so that they could get into college. It really makes, makes us think that, that Sydney is somewhere smiling at it all. I miss Sydney because she was one of my closest friends and she would always play wall ball with me and cheer me up. I've had one dream and it was of Sydney being alive, like back alive, but she looked different and she was older. I don't know why I dreamt about it. I, I just dreamt about being at her house and then she just was there and like a teenager. Xavier has a special place for the friends that he lost. Around Christmas time that year, he was wearing this ring, one of those you get out of the little gumball machines, and it had two hearts on it. And I said, where'd you get that ring? And he said, oh, Sydney gave it to me. And that was all he would say. I feel lucky that I survived and that I'm still here. I'm thankful that Miss Dunn was there at that day because she helped me take it a day at a time and find your footing and try to take those steps forward. And there's lots of days where you get knocked back some, 
You just have to keep going. When I see the new building, I can't help but think, well, at least they rebuilt. But at the same time, it just kind of hits me to the images that I have in my head of the seven crosses planted out front and the chain link fences covered in t-shirts and flowers and things like that. But we've come a long way from those days. And when they rebuilt it, they put like benches in front of it, seven benches, and it says the kids' names on each one. And it shows like a bunch of carvings and pictures of what they like to do. at the pictures on the wall, I feel that they're still close by and that they're watching over the kids at Plaza. Say yes to your kids more often. Don't say no all the time. Have fun with them. Take them places. Let them see new things. Um, there's so many, so many rotten things that we dwell on, you know, money and time and we don't have this and we don't have that and it could be a lot worse as long as you've got each other it could be a lot worse so much drama and it's only the beginning the bachelorette monday at 8 7 central